The ledger is thick and it's filling up with names. This recruitment office has been open only a matter of days and already hundreds of men have signed on. The army for which they're enrolling doesn't exist yet, but that isn't deterring the volunteers. These young soldiers joined the uprising against Muammar Gaddafi on the first day. Now they've enlisted in the rebel force and they say they're ready to march on Tripoli. We don't want money or cars or anything. We want to protect the country and its people. A lot of young people are sacrificing themselves. They want to go to the West. We have old men and women who will go to the West to liberate it. So there's no shortage of volunteers, no shortage of patriotism and revolutionary zeal. But as to exactly when, how and even if they intend to advance on the capital, that's another question. The anti-Gaddafi forces say their first task is to defend the east of the country, what they call Free Libya. Taking the fight to the capital would be the next step. We have a force that can protect Benghazi. The force may use heavy trucks to transport tanks to go to Tripoli and pass through Sirt on the way because it still supports the regime. The power we have is enough. The ammunition, supplies and fuel are also enough. We don't have a problem. But a tour of this airfield paints a less optimistic picture of what the rebels have at their disposal. Rusting, Soviet-era fighter planes that haven't left the tarmac in years. All part of Gaddafi's strategy to prevent the army from ever threatening his rule. The army was dismantled years ago. The regime is concentrating only on security units. The victory they're celebrating is incomplete as long as Muammar Gaddafi remains in control of cities in the West. And most Libyans fear he will not be defeated without more bloodshed. Jackie Rowland, Al Jazeera, in eastern Libya.